I don't know how you are doing, but of late I have really been struggling with the new normal we seem to be living in. I'm tired of being largely confined to my house. I'm tired of not being able to spend time with friends. I'm tired of not being able to hug people. I'm tired of not being able to hang out in the coffee shop. I'm tired of always having to make sure I have a mask whenever I go out. I'm tired of not being able to see my parents. Actually, we went down last Sunday to visit. The first time in a long time. But we sat out in the yard under the shade tree. And it was so good to see them. I'm tired of the need to keep distance from people when out and about. I'm tired of not being able to find Lysol spray or wipes easily. I'm tired of not being able to host summer lunch at the garden. As all of my Facebook memories from last year come up about summer lunch, it makes me sad every time I see the kids engaging with us at that activity. I'm tired of Zoom meetings. Zoom meetings and Zoom meetings. I'm grateful for the technology and the ability to use it, but I'm tired of those meetings. I'm tired of wondering if we will get to go on our vacation to the mountains this year for the 23rd year in a row. I'm tired of the debates about whether or not school will be in, re in person or remote learning. I'm tired of the politicalization of this pandemic. I'm tired of people who think this is a hoax. I'm tired of the selfish people who can only think of themselves in these strange times. I'm tired of the misinformation that is out there and how hard it is to tell what is what. And I could go on. I'm sure you have a thing or two you could add to the list of things that you are tired of. As I talk with many of you and others in our community, I sense a real weariness with all the craziness we're living through. Part of it is that we have never been here before. And it is hard. It's hard not to be able to live life as we normally would. We've become an instant gratification society and we struggle when we can't have what we want or do what we want when we want to. I was talking with someone the other day who is a high risk for contracting COVID, and they were really struggling with the isolation, feeling like they don't have any friends anymore because no one can come by to visit. It is indeed a tough time. I was talking with someone the other day who was struggling with not being able to go places where they could see people. And when they did get out, not being able to hug or shake hands with people they saw. They were craving personal touch. I've spoken to some who have summer vacation plans and usually look forward to that time away, but have been unable to look forward to this time away for fear that things will change and they won't be able to go. Usually in times like these, when we're struggling, just having something to look forward to, something to focus on is a very helpful reality. But in these crazy, unprecedented times, that isn't helpful because of the uncertainty of things. I've been struggling with what to preach on from week to week and how to be relevant to what's happening right now. So I've not been doing series preaching like I normally would. And I've been trying to stay extra sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. In that regard, I was drawn to Hebrews 12, verse 1 through 13, which reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us, 
We do this by keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not given your lives in your struggle against sin. And you have forgotten, and have you forgotten, the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children. He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the the father of our spirits? And live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how, but God's discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in His holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening, it's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall, but become strong. Well, the writer of Hebrews is really offering some helpful advice on how to live life as faithful followers of Jesus in this passage. It also speaks well to how we as followers of Jesus can weather this pandemic we are going through right now. The book of Hebrews is all about the importance of Jesus being the high priest who has taken away the sins of the world and has made a relationship with God possible, who has changed the way we relate to God directly, and without the need of regular animal sacrifices done by some priest. In the concluding chapters, the writer talks about our journey of faith being like running a race. As I read and reread the words of Hebrews 12, 1 through 13, and as I prayed about this message this week, I kept being drawn to the image the writer shares and how it is helpful for me in the midst of the struggles I named at the beginning of this message. And my hope is that it will be helpful to you too if you have similar struggles with this crazy time we are living in. And if you aren't struggling with the situation we find ourselves in, it can also apply to the best way to live life as a follower of Jesus for the long haul. The image that the writer shares is that of running a race. He says in verses 1 and 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Running with endurance the race set before us is the task at hand. In the midst of difficult times, it is tempting to give up, to get off course, to get discouraged, to become depressed, to lose sight of the goal. 
To run with endurance is to run in such a way that we stay engaged. That we keep the goal fixed in our mind. That we push through the challenges that pop up in our way. To run with endurance means we stay on the course and keep the momentum moving forward. In the midst of these unprecedented and challenging times, how can we run the race with endurance? The race that God has set before us. That's the question we must ask and the question we must answer. It is the work that we must do. The first thing the writer encourages us to do both in our life of faith and in running the race with endurance through this pandemic is to strip off every weight that slows us down. In our life of faith, that is the sin that so easily entangles us. But in facing this pandemic, what it is, what is it that slows us down? What is it that entangles us and threatens to take us off course? For me, it is putting myself in dangerous situations where I might spread the virus or pick up the virus. Not that I'm eager not to serve, because I am indeed, and I am serving in a variety of ways, but it is important to be wise about exposing myself to others, so I don't go in the coffee shop to sit and work like I'd love to do. I don't eat inside of restaurants. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying I don't. I wear a mask whenever I'm in a store or around people where I can't keep a safe physical distance. I use hand sanitizer and wash my hands often. We aren't having people into our home. I don't share rides in my truck with anyone other than Sharon. I did once last week and I vowed not to do it again because it's not wise. What other things can you think of that might slow down your ability to run the race with endurance through this pandemic? The next thing the writer of Hebrews encourages is keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, <clears throat> the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. It is impossible to run any race if you don't have the end goal in mind. If you don't have the end goal in mind when you start to get tired, you'll give up. So being able to keep our eyes, hearts, minds, and lives fixed on Jesus is the goal. I'm grateful for the love Jesus offers me, and in response, I am committed to serving him by serving others. Staying focused means I am constantly looking for opportunities to serve, constantly looking for people whom to bless. And in these pandemic times, it means looking for creative ways to do so. Working in the community garden this year hasn't been as fulfilling as in years past because of the need to keep distant from others and the smaller number of community members that come out to work nights. However, this past week was the most fun yet. The few of us who were there enjoyed interacting with each other from a safe distance, and we got lots done. It's clear that we're connecting at deeper levels, and that makes it much more fulfilling than simply pulling weeds. In order to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, sometimes it is helpful to pause and ask yourself, where have I seen God show up in the midst of my life in recent days? It's important to mark those occasions. Two weeks ago, he showed up on that 
dreaded Zoom call in the form of the director of the food bank asking if we could use some fresh veggie boxes to bless others. And then he showed up again when I put out the call and I had four people respond to join me in that effort. And this week he showed up in finding new places to share those boxes in order to reach more people, especially people in rural areas where the, the needs might be great and not being met as easily as those in the city. We made the request of the school system to let us use their facilities and they agreed, which I'm told is a huge way that Jesus showed up. This week he also showed up in the notification that we are going to be awarded a $1,500 grant from Arby's Foundation nationally to feed children at Stone Grove Crossing. This was initiated months ago when the local owner of the Arby's in Salisbury called saying he had been given my name as a possible partner and way to use this grant to make a difference in our community. Whenever it gets tempting to quit, whenever it gets tempting to stop running the race, look for Jesus. Do what you need to in order to keep your eyes fixed on him. Ask yourself where you have seen him in recent days. In addition, the writer of Hebrews encourages us to remember all that Jesus went through so that we don't get weary and give up. Verse 3. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people, and then you won't become weary and give up. No matter what Jesus faced, he remained focused on his calling and focused on the role he had come to earth to play. We too must stay focused. We have been at this new normal for many months now. It is tempting to give in to the weariness that has set in. I've been hearing this theme a lot in recent weeks as I talk with people who are struggling with the state of things. The writer of Hebrews encourages us. Take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. That is my hope too. That is my encourage that is that is why I am encouraging you with these simple things that you will find strength for continuing the race. That you will find an ability to get a new grip and keep running the race God has set before you. So in order to do that Strip off every weight that slows you down. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, both the hope he offers you and the calling he has placed on your life. Look for where he has met you in the midst of this pandemic and look for the opportunities he provides you for serving him by serving others. Don't give in to the weariness. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't fall to the ground because your knees are weak. Reach out. Look up. Hang on. Keep your eyes, heart, mind, and lives fixed on Jesus. May it be so in each of our lives. Amen.